The giant panda, Iluropoda melanoleuca, sometimes called a panda bear or simply panda, is a bear species endemic to China. It is characterized by its bold black and white coat and rotund body. The name giant panda is sometimes used to distinguish it from the red panda, a neighboring mustaloid. Though it belongs to the order Carnivora, the giant panda is a folivore, with bamboo shoots and leaves making up more than 99% of its diet. Giant pandas in the wild occasionally eat other grasses, wild tubers, or even meat in the form of birds, rodents, or carrion. In captivity, they may receive honey, eggs, fish, yams, shrub leaves, oranges, or bananas along with specially prepared food. The giant panda lives in a few mountain ranges in central China, mainly in Sichuan, and also in neighboring Shaanxi and Gansu. As a result of farming, deforestation, and other development, the giant panda has been driven out of the lowland areas where it once lived, and it is a conservation-reliant vulnerable species. A 2007 report showed 239 pandas living in captivity inside China and another 27 outside the country. By December 2014, 49 giant pandas lived in captivity outside China, living in 18 zoos in 13 countries. Wild population estimates vary. One estimate shows that there are about 1,590 individuals living in the wild, while a 2006 study via DNA analysis estimated that this figure could be as high as 2,000 to 3,000. Some reports also show that the number of giant pandas in the wild is on the rise. By March 2015, the wild giant panda population had increased to 1,864 individuals. In 2016, it was reclassified on the IUCN Red List from endangered to vulnerable, affirming decade-long efforts to save the panda. In July 2021, Chinese authorities also reclassified the giant panda as vulnerable. The giant panda has often served as China's national symbol, appeared on Chinese gold panda coins since 1982 and as one of the five Fuwa mascots of the 2008 Summer Olympics held in Beijing. Taxonomy Classification For many decades, the precise taxonomic classification of the giant panda was under debate because it shares characteristics with both bears and raccoons. However in 1985, molecular studies indicate the giant panda is a true bear, part of the family Ursidae. These studies show it diverged about 19 million years ago from the common ancestor of the Ursidae, it is the most basal member of this family and equidistant from all other extant bear species. The giant panda has been referred to as a living fossil. Etymology The word panda was borrowed into English from French, but no conclusive explanation of the origin of the French word panda has been found. The closest candidate is the Nepali word ponya, possibly referring to the adapted wrist bone of the red panda, which is native to Nepal. In many older sources, the name panda or common panda refers to the red panda, Ilurus fulgens, comma, which was described some 40 years earlier and over that period was the only animal known as a panda. This necessitated the use of giant and lesser slash red prefixes to differentiate the species. Even in 2013, the Encyclopedia Britannica still used giant panda or panda bear for the bear, and simply panda for the red panda. Since the earliest collection of Chinese writings, the Chinese language has given the bear many different names, including Ma, ancient Chinese name for giant panda, Hua Xiong, spotted bear, and Zhu Xiong, bamboo bear. The most popular names in China today are Daxiangmo, lit. Giant bear cat, or simply Xiongmo, lit. Bear cat. As with the word panda in English, Xiongmo was originally used to describe just the red panda, but Daxiangmo and Xiaxiangmio, lit. Little bear cat, were coined to differentiate between the species. In Taiwan, another popular name for panda is the inverted Damaoxiang, lit. Giant cat bear, though many encyclopedias and dictionaries in Taiwan still use the bear cat form as the correct name. Some linguists argue, in this construction, bear instead of cat is the base noun, making the name more grammatically and logically correct, which may have led to the popular choice despite official writings. This name did not gain its popularity until 1988, when a private zoo in Tainan painted a sun bear black and white and created the Tainan fake panda incident. Subspecies 
Two subspecies of giant panda have been recognized on the basis of distinct cranial measurements, color patterns, and population genetics, 31. The nominate subspecies, A. M. melanoleuca, consists of most extant populations of the giant panda. These animals are principally found in Sichuan and display the typical stark black and white contrasting colors. The Qinling panda, A. M. kinlingensis, is restricted to the Qinling Mountains in Shanxi at elevations of 1,300 to 3,000 m, 4,300 to 9,800 feet. The typical black and white pattern of Sichuan giant pandas is replaced with a light brown and white pattern. The skull of A.M. kinlingensis is smaller than its relatives, and it has larger molars. A detailed study of the giant panda's genetic history from 2012 confirms that the separation of the Qinlin population occurred about 300,000 years ago, and reveals that the non-Qinlin population further diverged into two groups, named the Minshan and the Chiolidaxianglingsianglingliangshan group respectively, about 2,800 years ago. Panda diplomacy is the practice of sending giant pandas from China to other countries as a tool of diplomacy. From 1941 to 1984, the Chinese government gifted pandas to other countries. Since 1984, they have been leased rather than gifted due to a PRC policy change. History Pre-1950s While there are few ancient records of the giant panda, during the Manchu dynasty skins of this animal, Beisheng, presumed to be the panda, were sent as tribute to the government of China by the aborigines of western Sichuan and eastern Tibet, according to David Crockett Graham. The first instance of panda diplomacy in the modern era was arranged by Sung Mei Ling, Madame Chang, in 1941. China was under siege by Japan, the U.S. had been sending aid to the Kuomintang, nationalist government, in China, and Madame Chang wanted a dramatic way of saying thank you. There had been previous pandas sent to the U.S., including one named Su Lin sold to the Brookfield Zoo in Chicago by Ruth Harkness in 1937, a second one named Mei Mei brought back by Harkness in 1938 and also sold to the Brookfield Zoo, one named Pandora sent to the Bronx Zoo by David Crockett Graham in 1938, and a second named Pan sent to the Bronx Zoo in 1939. Besides the two live pandas sent to the Bronx Zoo, Graham had also collected a number of skins and skeletons that were sent to the Smithsonian. In the summer of 1941, Madame Chang enlisted David Crockett Graham to capture a live panda. Eventually, two were caught. After spending some time at Graham's house in Chengdu, they were brought to Chongqing for a formal handover to a representative of the Bronx Zoo. William J. Dunn, a CBS radio reporter, was in Chongqing at the time and was enlisted to MC the ceremony, which would air on both Radio XGOY, The Voice of China, and CBS Radio. To ensure the program aired during prime time in the US, it originated from Chongqing at 4 a.m. local time. Annalie Whitmore, then working as publicity manager for United China Relief, interviewed the participants and wrote the transcript. The broadcast was to include Madame Chang, her sister Sung Ai Ling, Madame Kung, David Crockett Graham, and John T. Van from the Bronx Zoo. The plan was to transmit the XGOY signal to an RCA communications center in Manila and then on to San Francisco. However, on the morning of November 9, 1941, the engineers were unable to confirm reception from Manila. The broadcast began as planned, but atmospheric conditions prevented the broadcast from reaching the United States. The pandas were flown to Hong Kong under cover of night and from there to the Philippines on Pan Am's Hong Kong Clipper. From there, they took a circuitous six-week route by ship to San Francisco. Unfortunately, while they were en route, Pearl Harbor was bombed, and, when they arrived in San Francisco in late December 1941, front-page news was all about war. While the pandas did get attention, they weren't the top of the news across the nation as had been hoped. The bears were officially received by the Bronx Zoo on December 30, 1941, and five months later, following a national content, they were named Pandi and Panda. While the Republic of China used giant pandas for diplomatic means as early as 1941, the People's Republic of China began to use panda diplomacy more prominently in the 1950s and has continued the practice into the present day. Between 1957 and 1983, 24 pandas were given as gifts to nine nations as gestures of friendship. 
These nations included the Soviet Union, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, the United States of America, and the United Kingdom. When President Nixon visited China in 1972, Mao Zedong promised to send two pandas to an American zoo. In exchange, Nixon gave two musk oxen to the Chinese as a gift. The mutual gifts illustrated the growing diplomatic relationship between China and the United States at the time. 12. Despite the long history of panda diplomacy, the arrival of the pandas in 1972 marked the first time a panda had been in the United States in over 20 years. 11. Upon the panda's arrival in April 1972, First Lady Pat Nixon donated them to the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., where she welcomed them in an official ceremony. Over 20,000 people visited the pandas the first day they were on display, and an estimated 1.1 million visitors came to see them the first year they were in the United States. The pandas were wildly popular and China's gift was seen as an enormous diplomatic success, evidence of China's eagerness to establish official post-1984 lease policy. In 1984, China's leader Deng Xiaoping modified the policy, such that subsequent pandas would be leased, instead of gifted, beginning with China presenting two pandas to Los Angeles during the 1984 Olympic Games for $50,000 per month per panda. This practice was again modified in 1991 in favor of long-term leases. China began to offer pandas to other nations only on 10-year lease. The standard lease terms include a fee of up to 1 million US dollars per year and a provision that any cubs born during the lease period be the property of the People's Republic of China. Since 1998, because of a World Wildlife Fund lawsuit, the US Fish and Wildlife Service allows a US zoo to import a panda only if the zoo can ensure that China will channel more than half of its loan fee into conservation efforts for wild pandas and their habitat. The gifting of two pandas to Hong Kong in 2007 was ostensibly an exception to this lease model, but can be seen as outside of the spectrum of panda diplomacy. After the 2008 Sichuan earthquake that severely damaged many facilities, 60 pandas required new housing. The majority were given to nations that had favorable trade agreements with China, or those that supplied China with necessary resources, such as uranium from Australia. 11. Taiwan. In 2005, Lin Chan, chairman of the Kuomintang, the then opposition party in Taiwan, visited mainland China. As part of the talks between Lin and the CCP, two pandas, later named Tuan Tuan and Yuan Yuan, meaning reunion in Chinese, were offered as a gift to the people of Taiwan. While the idea was popular with the Taiwanese public, it was opposed by the Republic of China (ROC) government of Taiwan, then led by the Democratic Progressive Party (DPP) which favors Taiwanese independence and staunchly opposes unification with the People's Republic of China. The gift of pandas was seen as an attempt by the CCP to draw the ROC government into its united front. While several zoos in Taiwan made bids to host the pandas, the ROC government raised objections, ostensibly on the grounds that pandas were not suited to the Taiwanese climate and that Taiwan did not have the expertise to rear pandas successfully. It was widely understood, however, that these were pretexts underlaid by political considerations by the DPP-led government to maintain its distance from the PRC government. Another technical issue is a dispute over the applicability of the Convention on the International Trade of Endangered Species sites. In 1998, China offered the Republic of China two giant pandas in exchange for wartime peace. The PRC insisted that a transfer from mainland China to Taiwan was a domestic transfer, not subject to sites, while the ROC government disputed this and would not accept the pandas without sites procedures. On March 11, 2006, the ROC formally rejected the offer, with President Chen Shui Bian explaining in his weekly newsletter, ABN, Chen's nickname, sincerely urges the Chinese leaders to leave the giant pandas in their natural habitat because pandas brought up in cages or given as gifts will not be happy. Following a change of government in Taiwan, in July 2008, the ROC government led by the Kuomintang stated that it would accept the gift of two four-year-old giant pandas. In December 2008, the government approved the import of pandas under the terms of species of traditional herbal medicine. Tuan Tuan and Yuan Yuan arrived at Taipei Zoo later in the same month. In response to the transfer, 
The site secretariat stated that the transfer of the two pandas was a matter of internal or domestic trade, and so was not required to be reported to sites. The ROC quickly issued a rebuttal to the site statement and insisted that the country-to-country -country transfer protocols were respected. The ROC also noted that such procedures would not have been needed if it had been an internal-slash-domestic transfer. The ROC further noted that Taiwan is not a site signatory and is therefore not obligated to report to the site secretariat its acceptance of the two pandas. United States In the 1970s, the Nixon administration sought to improve U.S.-China relations. Shortly after Nixon's visit to China in 1972, Beijing sent two pandas, named Ling Ling and Xing Xing. The female died in 1992 from heart disease, and the male was euthanized in 1999 after developing end-stage kidney disease. China has leased out subsequent pandas to the US, however most of these leases have expired or are set to expire soon, with the National Zoo returning three giant pandas to China in November 2023. In the late 2010s and early 2020s, with China-United States relations straining, China began declining to renew panda leases for U.S. zoos. The San Diego Zoo pandas returned to China in 2019, followed by pandas at the Memphis Zoo and National Zoo in Washington, D.C. in 2023. The Memphis pandas, Ye Ye and Lulu, became a rallying point for Chinese calls to repatriate the bears after accusations of poor living conditions circulated on Chinese social media sites and the sudden death of Lulu in February 2023. A joint team of American and Chinese scientists concluded Jiya was suffering from skin disease due to genetic components and fluctuating hormones. The Zoo Atlanta pandas, the last giant pandas remaining in the United States, are scheduled to return to China in late 2024. Scholars, including Johns Hopkins University political economist Ho Feng Hung, have questioned whether a deterioration in U.S.-China relations starting in the late 2010s brought an end to panda diplomacy between the two countries. In a 2023 Washington Post opinion piece, Lonnie G. Bunch III and Ellen Stofan, secretary and undersecretary, respectively, of the Smithsonian Institution, called the return of the National Zoo's pandas a lesson in cultural diplomacy. They wrote, pandas are a vital source of cultural diplomacy, using the arts, science and history to help nations find common ground with the hopes of building on our shared humanity to create a more peaceful world. The pandas were a bridge between the American people and the Chinese people. They concluded, if we can save this iconic species, then surely, we can work together to tackle some of our greatest challenges, including climate change and preservation of ecosystems around the world. Other nations. Other countries recognize the significance of pandas as diplomatic symbols, emblematic of the state of relations with China. During a visit by then Chinese leader Hu Jintao to Japan in May 2008, China announced the lease of two pandas to Japan. The leader was quoted as saying giant pandas are very popular among the Japanese, and they are a symbol of the friendly ties between Japan and China. Treatment of the pandas is likewise associated with the relevant foreign policy. For example, in 1964, British diplomats worried that a transfer of a panda from a London zoo to Moscow would worsen Sino-Soviet relations. In January 2006, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Robert Zolik was photographed hugging a five-month-old panda cub during his visit to Sichuan. The image was widely broadcast by the Chinese media and was purportedly interpreted as a sign that Zolik supported better relations between China and the United States. On April 16, 2014, China planned to send a pair of pandas named Fu Hua and Feng Yi to Malaysia to mark their 40-year diplomatic ties, but were postponed following the MH370 tragedy. The two pandas later arrived at Kuala Lumpur International Airport on May 21, 2014, and were placed at the National Zoo of Malaysia. In 2018, Finland agreed to care for two giant pandas following their endorsement of the One China policy. Two pandas, Kai Tao and Hu Chun, arrived in Jakarta in 2017 to be placed in Taman Safari in Bagar as part of the 60th anniversary celebrations of China-Indonesia relations. The most recent panda lease was on June 5, 2019, 
When Chinese Communist Party CCP, General Secretary Xi Jinping leased two giant pandas to Russia's Moscow Zoo on an official state visit as a sign of respect and trust. The pandas include a two-year-old male Ru Yi and a one-year-old female Ding Ding. In December 2023, the only giant pandas in the UK were sent back to China. Practicalities Keeping pandas is very expensive. Beside the cost of the rent payable to China, obtaining enough bamboo is very expensive. A panda typically consumes only fresh bamboo, eating 40 kilograms, 88 pounds, of it every day. It was reported in 2011 that Edinburgh Zoo spent $107,000 per year to feed its two pandas. This caused the zoo to ask for bamboo donations, as well as for local gardeners to start growing bamboo. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the supply of bamboo added to cost considerations. Owing to the difficulty of securing a consistent and adequate supply of fresh bamboo, Calgary Zoo opted to return their pair of pandas ahead of schedule, to join their progeny back in China. Copenhagen Zoo opened a panda enclosure in 2019 for two pandas on lease from China for 15 years with the price tag of $1 million annually. The enclosure itself cost $24 million, though it was privately funded. In 2003, China sent Thailand a pair of pandas, Chuang Chuang and Lin Hui, to Chiang Mai Zoo. Chuang Chuang was put on a diet in 2007 due to obesity and died in September 2019 as a result of heart failure. The public started to blame this incident on China's panda diplomacy, with many arguing that sending the animals overseas and outside their endemic habitat was detrimental to their health, further exacerbating their population decline. Thank you for watching the video remember to click like and follow to receive other good videos.